Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in the previous video we decided to create the ultimate solar system by basically arranging 42 planets in a ring around the hypothetical star here and we use programming to do all of this in about 5 minutes. In today's video we're going to finish this project and we're actually going to create uh, like 400 or so planets around the star and hopefully my computer doesn't crash and I'm going to show you the programming skills and uh, the actual script needed for this and well let's begin. Welcome to What The Math. And actually, I'm also going to correct a few mistakes, uh, specifically one where I placed 42 instead of 52 planets. 42 was actually the more stable arrangement that lasts for about 10 billion years. But uh, if you're okay with uh, planets being in, in the same orbit for only about a billion years, with about 78 to 80 percent chance of surviving, you can actually place 52. And the distance between each of them is approximately 12 hill spheres. Uh, hill sphere is a concept I've covered in one of the previous videos but I can explain it in one of the future videos as well. Although I've done it so many times that maybe it's better you just check out in one of the previous videos because honestly, Hill Sphere, you know, Hill Sphere. Anyway, moving on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I love his Hill Spheres. They're awesome. So we're going to be actually erasing these planets. Um, but before that, let's go into our script. So this is kind of what it looked like. I haven't really changed anything here, but we're going to be adding things to it today. And specifically, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be including two more parameters here. Yeah, or variables that is and um, one of them will change the inclination and we'll need this for the following purpose so right now all of the planets are orbiting in the same direction but if you actually look at the ultimate where is it here it is the ultimate uh, arrangement of the ultimate solar system you'll notice that some some planets are orbiting in this direction but some are orbiting in a retrograde direction so they're kind of doing one way or the other way and to do this we'll have to basically change the inclination from like let's say 360 to minus 360 and that's actually pretty easy to do i'll show you how to do this with scripts uh, with the script we're making as well and the other thing we're going to be changing here is this which is the semi-major axis which is the distance uh, of every planet from the star now the first distance is going to be equal to this away this way so in other words it's about 12 hill spheres that way but the thing is since we're placing some of the planets orbiting in the opposite direction we can actually have another ring in between them going the opposite direction so it's not not really 12 it's actually six so we're dividing this by two but at this distance, the hill sphere will actually change because hill sphere's formula depends on the uh, semi-major axes. So here it will actually become like not 12, but like 12.2 or something. And um, so we need to find a way to calculate this really easily without really doing actual manual math because, well, my teachers back in high school used to say, oh, you have to do math by hand and you have to be really good at it because that's how you learn math. And I said, you guys are wrong. You're all stupid. I'm going to do it my own way and uh, we're going to do it my way. In other words, we're going to automate everything. We're going to use absolutely no manual mathematics whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we're going to do nothing but automate a script that will do everything for us and we'll just have to deal with it. If you are one of those people that likes to do everything manually, especially math, well, then maybe this is the wrong channel for you because, you know, automation and Python and laziness is the uh, how we do it here. Anywho, moving on. So first thing we're going to do is let's find a way to um, change the semi-major axis. As a matter of fact, let's find a way to calculate the actual um, hill sphere distance between every planet. Now, first of all, I need to correct this. This is going to be 52, not 42. 52. And same thing here. 52. The second thing we're going to be doing here is we are going to be importing a script called math. Uh, not a script, sorry, a library. Um, and this library is only going to be used for this. Boom. It basically brings pi into the equation. Yay, math. Uh, so that already automates that part for us. We don't have to calculate uh, pi. And why do we need pi? Well, because a circle a circumference equation is 2 times pi times radius. And in this case, we're going to be using seven major axes, which in the first example is just 1. So we can leave it as 1. And this means that the circumference of the first orbit, so the circumference of this whole orbit here, equals to, and this is in astronomical units, boom, 6.28 astronomical units. 
Now, if I were to divide this by 52, which is number of planets, this gives you, let me zoom in, this gives you uh, the distance in astronomical units between every planet. So it's about 0.12 AU. Uh, so that's the distance right here, and that's the distance we're going here as well. But that's for the next ring that orbits in the same direction. We want to find the ring that orbits in the opposite direction, so here we're going to divide by 104 instead. And it will be about, about 0, uh, 0 0.06. So anyway, so that's uh, that's how we're going to be calculating this. But because I want to automate it and I want to create all of the um, semi-major axes for pretty much every ring uh, that we're going to have, we're going to create like what? I think it's seven or no, it's eight of these. So how do we automate this? Well, we're going to be using the for loop again, this thing. But first, let's actually create a few variables and define some of these things because I want to be able to um, basically calculate all of this automatically without worrying about anything. So this is going to be very, very rudimentary. I know this is not the best and the most elegant way of doing it in Python, but I just wanted to explain this very easily for those of you who have no Python experience whatsoever. Um, so this is the first distance for the first ring that's going to be orbiting the other way. It's about 1.06 astronomical units away from the star. Let's make the for loop. Uh, we actually don't need this anymore. I just wanted to check. Uh, the for loop is going to go um, seven more times. So we're going to go seven for X in, oops, oops, for X in range seven. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, define this new variable, which is the new hill sphere or the new distance between the new planets uh, at the second and third and fourth ring and so on. And it's going to be uh, calculated by using the same formula, except that instead of one here, we're replacing it with the hill sphere, which is... In this case, 1.06, as you can see right here. And once again, divide by 104. Um, and because it's a loop, it's going to do this several times. So we want to actually change this value every single time. Well, not this value, but this value every single time. So this is how we're going to do it. And so the way that we're going to automate all of this is basically we're going to include this line here. And what this does is it first, uh, it uses this new calculation and uh, it attaches it to the previous value of the hill sphere and redefines the new hill sphere as the calculated value plus the old hill sphere and then returns it back to the loop and it does it again and again and again. So let me just help you visualize uh, this by just basically displaying this. So you can see that now we have all of our uh, distances from the star cal calculated automatically. So. Uh, the reason we stop at 159 is because this is the official boundary for the outer habitable zone as of, I guess, 2018. Um, and that's the so-called conservative habitable zone where we think you can still find liquid water, but past that, it's also most likely not going to happen. There's a, a few sort of controversial discussions about this, including uh, a more, uh, or I guess, I guess a less conservative zone that, ha that extends up to like 2.6 AU. But that's another question for another video. Anyway, so here we just basically automated all of this. All of our distances are calculated. And maybe actually, I shouldn't really name this hill sphere because that's not really what it is. This really should be called um, semi-major axis so that we don't confuse ourselves. So I'm going to call it uh, semi-major axis here and also here. Perfect. And uh, what I want to do is I actually want to add all of this to a list of axes. So we're going to just call it axes. Um, and what this list is going to contain is essentially, well, it's going to contain everything uh, that we've just created so that we have all of our um, seven major axes in the same list. So it's going to start with, well, basically one. We're going to enter these manually because we don't have to do it. Um, we don't have to put it in the script. It just, it's an extra line that's not worth it. Uh, then we're going to have our first seven major axes. And uh, so right now, this is all it has, right? If you print it out, it has two. And now we're going to automatically add all of the other ones by basically using the append command and adding every single semi-major axis to it. Boom. And, huh, interesting. So, oh, okay, of course, of course, because I need to replace these as well. That's why it's not calculating correctly. Let's run this again. And boom, and there you go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hmm, nine. Nine? 
We shouldn't have nine. We should have eight. Maybe this one is actually too much. Hmm. I think maybe we need to maybe we need to erase one. I think I think we should stick to this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just go with this for now because we're supposed to have eight orbits. Now, how are we going to change the um, inclination? Well, here's how. We're going to first create the uh, variable called inclination. I totally misspelled it. Um, and this variable is going to be equal to 360. I'm really having trouble typing here. And every time the loop runs, we're going to change this variable inclination uh, by multiplying it by minus one times minus one. Now that's the long way of doing it in Python. The short way is this. Multiplication sign equals minus one. This will automatically change, the, to, change it to a negative sign. Um, and to basically make this sort of work really effectively again, we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, we're going to create a list. And this list is going to contain our, our inclination and all of the all of the other inclinations from from the uh, from the loop here. So we're going to append again, and we're appending this inclination from here. And just to see if it all works, so let's print out both our lists. We're going to print out the um, axes list and also the inclination inclination list boom and boom and 360 minus 60 360 minus 360 360 minus 360 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 huh okay oh that's because i have to do the same thing here oh that's right okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat a little bit and include a manual uh list here so there we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And they're all changing signs. So now we have two lists. Um, that's basically all we need for this part. We don't need the print command anymore. Um, we've just created our automated script that creates all of the necessary parameters. We're going to place it right here in between the loop and the um, previous script. We also need to add a few more things here. So first of all, we're changing this, right? And we're, oops, wrong brackets. And we're also changing the inclination. So we need to put two more things here. Uh, these come before anomaly. So first one is going to be called SMA, which is semi major axis. And the next one is going to be called INCL, which is inclination. And uh, here we're doing the same thing. We're going to change this part. Uh, so we're going to attach this here. And uh, so now let's put it inside the main loop that will basically create the file. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to start by creating another loop. And this will be a loop inside a loop. So kind of like loopception. And this is going to run eight times because there's eight rings. So um, I'm using arbitrary Y here. And basically for Y in range eight, first of all, let's indent all of this by click pressing tab. Uh, for Y in range eight, our SMA is going to be equal to the axis list brackets y. Okay, what exactly does this mean? Well, this basically, so these are numbers, remember? Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For the first one, the number will be 0. It's going to go inside the list axis and bring up the 0th member, which is going to be this. Then it's going to bring up the first member, the second member, and so on. And the same thing for the next list here, which is inclination list. Inclination list uh, is going to use Y as well. And the variable for this is called inclination. So here we go. So this will attach the variable SMA to this, uh, INCL to this, and it will then put it inside this loop, which will use them to attach them to all of the planets. So if I didn't make any mistakes by pressing Control Enter, I get a mistake. Oh, okay, I see. It says uh, planetoid takes two position arguments, but four were given. And that is because inside my function on top, I also need to change this part as well. 
boom, done. Okay, let's try it again, and done. So it literally doesn't even take a second. And if I go to the go to the folder where the file was created, basically here it is. There's a lot of planets that were made here. The only problem I just literally noticed that is that they all have to they all have uh, the same names again. Um, yeah, the names are basically from Earth Zero to Earth Fifty Two. And that's a problem because I think Space Engine is not going to like that. So we need to change their names a little bit. I'm going to give them uh, arbitrary additional names. But everything else looks pretty good. You can see that there's literally like hundreds of planets here. Uh, 13,000 lines of code. But a small mistake. And that's because of the name here. So let's attach something to, um, to, to maybe this part. So we're going to say... Now, y is in here. So let's say string y, uh, which will define this as a um, basically the number of orbit, uh, the orbital ring, uh, plus, or actually no, ring plus string y. So ring one, ring two, ring three, and so on. And then plus the rest. One more time. Let's run this again. Open up the file. And here we go. Okay, it doesn't look super pretty, so you can change this if you don't like how it looks. But basically, okay, ring 7, earth 51. Go in the middle. Ring 3, earth 43. Uh, ring 1, earth 32. So here comes the crazy difficult part that we might actually fail in. We're going to try to open this up in our space engine. So in other words, we need to take this file, find our space engine folder, go to add-ons, catalogs, planets, erase the old planet file, put the new file here. And pray for the best. Uh, it's half a kilobyte. Oh, sorry, half a megabyte in size. That's that's probably the biggest planetary file I've ever had in my life. And well, here you go. The mega system in all of its glory. Now, depending on your settings in Space Engine, you might actually not be able to see all of the planets at once. Like right now, I put this uh, on low settings, so I don't really see all of them here, even though they are all here. It does say that this star right now, if I click on it, uh, contains 416 planets. Uh, some of them are basically not really visible on the map, but you, if I if I hold my mouse over them, and or better even, if I go here, if I click on this, scroll through the list of planets here, you can basically select all of them and just check out all of them and see them on the map as well. Uh, so a lot of them will just not be shown due to the constraints of Space Engine, depending on the quality of details you chose. So here, here are, for example, the planets from the second ring that's invisible right now. This is just a, one of the randomly generated planets. But as you can see, it just it does make the game extremely slow due to the amount of objects here. Alternatively, just to check if you actually ha have all of them, you can also just close this window and open the one below it. And you'll see that basically all this long line, that's all planets. These are the planets you've created. And that's essentially all of them all at once. And you can actually explore and look at each one of them in sort of more detail by just scrolling through this and seeing the ones that you like the most. Remember, the, all of these are procedurally generated. And all of these are basically Earth-like only in mass and radius, but definitely not in the look. So some of them will look like Earth. Some of them will look nothing like Earth. So that's what makes it cool. And some of them will actually have really awesome rings. Uh, and remember, all these things you can change and modify in the file, so you can create any kind of system you want. But if you wanted to create your own mega system, specifically the so-called uh, ultimate solar system, this is how you would do it. And all of the files are available in the GitHub in the link below. So do check them out if you want to try this yourself. Anyway, so that's really it. That's all I wanted to do in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this mini-series. And now you maybe, hopefully, will know a little bit more about Python. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.